So welcome to part three of this basic cyber tutorial. So in the last one, part two, we looked at how you can estimate the um, standard ellipse area and then it's corrected for small sample size and then the uh, convex hull area. So you see whether we can determine whether um, our populations differ in terms of the size of their isotopic niche. But now we're going to look at how we can tell if they differ in space. So what we're going to do is we're going to estimate the overlap of their ellipses to determine whether, say, quite distinct or there's a big overlap between them. So the first step is to define standard ellipses. So we're defining all of our ellipses and then we're going to estimate the overlap with the maximum likelihood fit of standard ellipses. So we're doing it between ellipses 1 and ellipses 2. So this is a community 1, population 1, community 1, population 2. We run that. And then we're going to look at the overlap between the corresponding 95% prediction ellipses using got the pound fires that we um, defined in part two. Next. Once we sign that, we can now create our histogram. It's still running now. So. So I'm just going to wait for that to run. So we've got the histogram, and you can here see the um, overlap. But we want to look at it as a proportion of the total ellipses. So basically, we've just ca calculated in terms of, say, you have two circles and they overlap. That overlapping point, that is what we've just calculated. But we want to work out what that is as a proportion of the total ellipse size. So in order to do that, Please make the volume drop on oh, okay. 
that we've calculated that, we can now do another histogram. And so here we've got it as a proportion of the satellite so series. So basically, if we go for like the amount, you can see it's between 10 to 15% of the total star ellipses area. That's how much the overlap is. So the larger the overlap, obviously, the more the two of them overlap and the less distinction between them in terms of the isotopic niche space. 